What's up? It's me, Bryson Booker, and it's time for another BBTV Pro Audio slash Vintage Audio review. I have something very unique here in front of me, and I actually got it for free, guys. Uh, the guys at my job, I work at McDonald's uh, still, at least when I come home from school, I work at McDonald's. And recently, as you all have probably noticed at all McDonald's, they have basically got a facelift and they basically dropped the old uh, shed look that they've had since I think around the early 70s. They've had the, you know, familiar shed look, you know, with the yellow things on the side and then the red building and, you know, the comfy atmosphere. Now it looks like a hospital when you go in there. But yeah, basically McDonald's dropped that whole comfy you know, warm feeling design for this new, uh, modern, cold, sterile hospital look that they've added to all their restaurants. And so recently, uh, the McDonald's out here in my area just got that uh, facelift, and now it looks, you know, like basically the rest of all, uh, the rest of the modern McDonald's. And part of the renovation was with the audio system. So the original audio system, I think, has been in that McDonald's since around 2004, or probably even earlier than that but they recently took out all the old speakers all the old processings uh, all the old uh, broadband software that they used to get the music from and they replaced it with new speakers and a new amplifier and a new uh, receiver to get music and this guy was basically sitting on a shelf and so I asked my manager hey are you guys still using this uh, old amplifier and he was like, no, take it. And so, it's mine now. <laughs> so, this amplifier uh, came from a McDonald's. It's been in the McDonald's, I think, again, since around, I would say, 03 or 04. But it is a TOA uh, power amplifier, commercial power amplifier uh, for speakers. And so, basically, I'm going to give you a quick run through, through everything it does. It's not complex. It looks complex, but it's really not complex. It's just a three-channel our three, I'm um, sorry, actually a five input receiver uh, with a couple of speaker outputs and really that's about it. As you can see the tape uh, from when uh, McDonald's actually owned this unit is still on here basically to let uh, the workers know that basically channels one through four were not in use but channel five which you can see right here where it says music this is where they plugged in the Again, I think broadband is some sort of broadband receiver uh, uh, receiver where they can get our broadband modem where music comes from, and then that music is fed into this thing. So that's the only input that was used at the McDonald's. You have tone controls, bass, and treble. That's about it. Both of these cover a wide band of frequencies. So if you boost the treble, you're also boosting 2K and above. <laughs> you know, but that's just the way that these EQs are. And then you have your master volume, and then your power button, which turns the unit right on. So, obviously, input one is missing a knob, uh, but that's okay. And then you have input two, input three, input four, and input five. So it's a five-input amplifier, so you can have five sources hooked up to it. And I'll show you the back to show you the outputs on the back of the unit. Again, this is a TOA 500 series receiver. I think these guys came out around the mid-90s, probably even earlier, because as I was looking online, it seemed like these units were actually older. Uh, so probably maybe the 80s, mid-80s to 90s, and maybe early 2000s. I'm not really sure on the date, but I'm going to kind of guess in the ballpark that it's probably around the early 90s or late 80s. But on the back here... Here are all of your inputs. So you have input 1 and input 2, which are mic inputs. So you can plug a mic directly into this amplifier. Obviously, for paging, easy paging or making announcements or, you know, if this unit was in a school and like the lunchroom, you could just hook a mic up to it and make your announcement to your students uh, without having to run all this extra gear up to the amplifier. Or another uh, idea that I had with this unit, if you were using this system or this amplifier in a house of worship and you, okay, so you have your main speakers, you know, going to the audience in the sanctuary, but you have a cry room or you have like 
an office space, things like that, you can basically run another line from your mixing console into this unit and then send that sound that you're getting from the main auditorium to the ceiling speakers in your office or your cry room or your gymnasium. So I just found that, you know, that's another use for these uh, PA amplifiers. That's pretty cool. Uh, it's also switchable here so you can uh, activate the phantom power. You can turn that off or on. There's phantom powers on input one and two. Input three can either be a phono, so basically a phonograph, or mic three. But with mic three, you have to use the uh, twist binding post, or I guess you can call them binding posts, or speaker terminals here, twist terminals here. So you, to connect up another mic for inputs three and four, you use the these terminals right here. Input four is switchable between auxiliary one or mic four. Mic four again is these terminals. Auxiliary one, I believe, is over here. So here we go. Auxiliary one, auxiliary two, auxiliary three. So there's three auxiliaries. So this is really the place where you would hook up your music sources or a phonograph or a stereo receiver or a tape deck. This is where you would do it right here. So you would actually have two sources going simultaneously if you use auxiliary one. So you can switch that on input four. So input four could be auxiliary one. And then the second one is input five. So you could have one on auxiliary two as well. So you can maybe use auxiliary one and auxiliary two. Our auxiliary one is input four, and input five could be auxiliary two. So again, you could use these as your music or playback inputs. And then there's auxiliary three, which is its own little volume control. You have a booster out, so if you have a power amp, another power amp that you wanted to connect to this unit to power extra speakers, you could do that. You have a pre-out for phonographs power in again for phonographs you could link some units together and you could also power other units from this unit so you could let's say you have a CD player you can plug the CD player right here set it up right on top of here and this is uh, basically not a switched output so when this unit is off this outlet goes off when the unit comes on the outlet goes on so that's pretty cool you could basically hook up a CD player or a DSP or another amplifier connect it right up to this uh, outlet right there and you can get power to that unit without having to use another uh, power source. You could also power this unit with batteries. So this unit can actually be powered by DC batteries. And again, to do that, you have to use the terminals on the back right here. Uh, to connect speakers, these are your speaker connections. Again, they are the good old fashioned commercial I guess you could say speaker wire type inputs or speaker terminals. And so to connect speakers up here, uh, there's a couple of different roles um, that you have. You can choose between 70 volts, 25 volts, and 4 ohms. So basically what you have to do is run one speaker wire from the COM to your speaker as well as the 4 ohm, 25V, or 25 volt, or 70 volt uh, terminals. So it comes from COM, goes to your speaker, and then you run the 4 ohms, 25 volt or 70 volt uh, twist right here, terminal, as to your speaker as well. And then you can daisy chain other speakers. What many people do is they'll connect it up to the COM and then maybe the 4 ohms, run it into one speaker, and then they'll keep daisy chaining ceiling speakers or outdoor speakers until the whole system is basically complete. <laughs> But in order for me to connect two speakers up to here, I have to use the COM and 4 ohms as well as the COM and 25 volt uh, terminals here to actually connect two speakers to this unit. I was surprised that it worked because um, I, I was kind of confused at first, like how am I going to connect speakers up to this thing? And I'm not an installer, I'm not a contractor, so I'm not really sure about the volts and, you know, daisy chaining ceiling speakers and all that stuff. But to connect a basic pair, pair of stereo speakers, if you're wondering, all you have to do, again, is run your, your COM to the, first, uh, to the first tab on your speaker, and then run your 4 ohm terminal to the second tab on your speaker, and do the same thing for the other speaker. So again, COM 
to the first tab of your speaker and then 70 volt or 25 volt probably 25 volt would be best because you would still be getting ohms to the second tab of your speaker and that's how you would connect two stereo speakers two just general stereo speakers up to this uh, amplifier it would take four wires to do it you can't just get away with using two wires it actually takes four but it will work and that's basically it with this unit uh, that's all that we have here oh right here is a mag phono output but this is covered because obviously it wasn't really used and so they just covered it up and that's about it so again a basic overview of the TOA commercial power amplifier that basically came out of a McDonald's uh, it does work it's still working I did test it with my Bose 201 stereo speakers not too long ago this thing is working like a charm there's no problems with it uh, again, made by TOA, it's the Series 500 amplifier. Uh, the exact model seems to be the A506. And so this is it. Uh, maybe if I actually have time, I'll do a sound test with it one of these days. But right now, that's just a general overview of what it can do.